Hello and welcome to part four of this grisaille painting tutorial. In this video, we are finally going to get to the final layer in the painting. Just to recap, we've come all the way from our full value graphite drawing that was meant to detail and familiarize us with the construction, proportion, and gestural themes that we were going to be working with in this picture. We've gone through a block in phase starting on a white canvas where we have established the basic dichotomy of shadow and light. We've gone through a second layer where we refined some of those initial ideas we had from the block in while expanding our value range and also pushing a little bit the sense of texture and opacity in the oil paint. And all the time we had it in mind that the choices we were taking were building up to prepare us to make really excellent and refined decisions in the final moment, and that final moment is actually here. This means a few things from a process perspective, and we'll talk about that in just a moment, but it also means some things from a conceptual perspective. With all of the experience that we've gained studying this subject, we should in this moment have a really crystal clear idea of what the final outcome is supposed to be. I've talked in other videos and during other lessons about something called form sense. Form sense, explained in its essence, is just understanding what a finished painting by you looks like. Which is to say, John Singer Sargent paintings look different finished from a Rembrandt painting, which looks different from a painting by Bastien Lepage. All these different artists have vastly different expressions of what their final work appears to be, and all of them in their own way look equally finished. Which, by the way, as a side note, is I think one of the most important things about these demonstrations. It would be one thing to just tell you what I think you should be doing. But by showing you, we're connecting together the idea or the concept that we're using to finish something and what the actual boots on the ground appearance of that is at every stage. Now, back to practicality. What we're going to be faced with in this moment is a painting with a fully fleshed out value scale that looks relatively resolved in a lot of different ways and also because we've given it the appropriate amount of time to dry thoroughly, it's gonna be a little bit sunken in. So first, we refresh the surface of the painting by oiling out. If you don't remember how to do this, I've addressed it in the previous video. Basically, we're talking about rubbing a little bit of linseed oil over the surface, wiping away whatever excess after about five minutes, and then beginning to paint just like you would any other day. Then, we also need to refresh the sense of design open up the painting again, refresh the sense of infinite possibilities in terms of what the outcome can be. And we do that, of course, just like we did in the second video, by re-establishing the block in. Now is not at all the moment to become precious and try to hold on to and save too much from previous layers. Oil paint is a material that works best when it's fresh and painted wet into wet. And by working best, I simply mean you're better able to make transitions when you're painting in between fresh, wet sections of oil paint. So like I said, we're not going to be precious, we're going to repaint things, and we're going to be highly selective about where we choose to repaint. Most of the work that we're going to do today is going to be based within the portrait. There will be a little bit of work done in the background, maybe to darken the left-hand side, and also to scumble a little bit of different temperatures into the right-hand side and bring out that sense of light and that sense of luminosity, though dimly lit in the background. But then we build up the opacity and the control and the subtlety in that central area to bring all the focus into the face. But without further ado, let's get into the painting, let's get into the demonstration, and I want to talk about some of the areas that I'm looking at that I think I want to work on. So starting out, you can see we have the same palette that we're working with, ivory black, raw umber, and flake white. I should mention here also that when you're loading up your palette, really try to make sure that you have enough oil paint on it. For what we're trying to do, which is to say, painting relatively directly on top of this already dried layer, we're going to need to make sure we have enough paint to do the job. The last thing you want to be doing is actually running out of the colors that are on your palette. And by the way, it's a classic beginner's mistake to load too little paint onto your palette. If you're trying to make a nice, fresh and direct oil painting, the last thing that you can be worried about is wasting a little bit of paint by squeezing too much out onto your palette. Also, as I said before, in these areas, you can see really clearly how the oil paint has sunk into those lower layers. All the dark values in the painting right now are one to two value steps above where they actually should be. Of course, this isn't cause for alarm, but eventually we do need to acknowledge that seeing the values as they are is gonna be really important if we're going to adjust some of the unity and transitions within the light shape. So why don't we dive into that right now and then I'll return and start to talk about some of the technical things we need to achieve.
So I thought it'd be great to pause for just a moment and take a look at this first phase of paint application. And I want to kind of dive in and just talk briefly about what concepts I'm trying to express here. So you can see in these areas where I'm trying to kind of reestablish this sense of the earliest moment of the block in. Now these are straight lines, these are simplifications, and they're meant to kind of reestablish and refresh the sense of kind of drawing within the painting. In addition to that, however, they're also supposed to be there to refresh that primary edge in between light and shadow. These painted edges are where a lot of the transitions that I'm gonna make from light into shadow are going to be making very meaningful interactions. Without these edges being repainted with fresh oil paint, I would not be prepared to actually progress into the next phase of resolution in this painting. Coming now to the end of this second video, I want to talk about some of the things that we introduced during the time that we've been working and also to talk about some of the things that are going to be coming up in the next video. The synopsis of what has happened in these last four hours is that we have essentially repeated the process that we went through in the second pass of oil paint on this portrait. We focused in a little bit more just on painting and refining the features rather than worrying about filling up the entire canvas again. Part of this is practical from the standpoint that when you are making refinements in oil paint, it really takes quite a long time. It's very labor intensive to create exactly the right kind of transitions and softness and construction in every area of the face. But also we were able to focus our efforts in on just the portrait because we had managed in the second pass of oil paint on this painting to make a rather effective background and also a pretty effective handling of the other features like the hair and the shirt. A lot of the work that we've done in this video as well has been based around the subject of dark halftones, specifically how dark halftone planes and the values that we assign to them play a major role in creating the soft turning impression of form that we associate with a much more finished painting. We also worked a lot on preserving the luminosity in the face. In the beginning of this painting session, we keyed up the lights again in order to make sure we had an appropriate balance between the lightest light and the darkest dark, which would allow us then to see very clearly and very well all the values in between that top and bottom of the spectrum. We also looked again and again and again at the assumptions that we have made about the values on the planes and how that describes the form that we're looking at. I mentioned very early on in the video that everywhere within the form, you should be searching for repeated values on either side of the form. So if you have similar values on the right-hand side of the forehead as you do on the left-hand side of the forehead, this should be a red flag and that should trigger you to search in your source image and within your understanding of the form to confirm or disconfirm the truth of that value relationship. We all have a possibility of going into autopilot sometimes and so this process of checking and rechecking ourselves is a way to make sure that we don't leave some of those mistakes behind. The next video in this series is going to be a continuation of the wet paint layer that we established in this video. So unlike like the separation in most of my video lessons, here we are not going to be there, we are not going to be confronted with a dry canvas that needs to be oiled out. We have wet oil paint that we can just continue working with. What that's going to allow us to do is to search for ultimately our final adjustments. We're going to do our best to create a sense of subtlety and also to finally incorporate the last layer of complexity and detail that will render this a finished painting. As much as possible, I always try to configure my process to have really clear questions and answers. There will be moments when we're finishing, though, that we have to rely a little bit on intuition. This is not at all a bad thing. This is, in fact, a really good thing. And in fact, I think it's what we associate really with art making. But before I get ahead of myself, let's end this lesson here and continue it on in the next video.